So today we got yet another perimeter planned here. This one is going to be a very, very special one and probably the most uh, used one that we'll ever have on the server, uh, mainly for the quality of life that this perimeter will give us. Now, I'm not going to give it too much away, but we will see, of course, Sprite Lord, you know, from the thumbnail and everything like that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be one of our most decorated ones, too, in terms of uh, detail that actually isn't related to Minecraft at all. So this will be fun to do for sure. So yeah, obviously going to do the regular standard perimeter preparations with the trenches, which Dazi already started over there with the first trench here. I think we'll need to build a couple of them just based off how high that one is. Um, it's not too bad though. These aren't anything, we're still in 117, so the trenches are not too bad at all. And all the materials for the road heater itself. So uh, yeah, get to the trenches. Then we'll get on to actually everything else that we need to do for this perimeter, including gathering materials for the decoration and the perimeter uh, contraptions themselves. All right, so we have a bit of progress on the perimeter here. By a bit, I mean quite an actual lot, of course. Uh, we have the whole perimeter, of course, cleared out, and we are working on the actual farms and everything that's going to be in this perimeter. Now, if you haven't guessed, this is going to be a, another piston factory perimeter thing-esque in a sense. So, my previous piston factories, of course, are only the crafters for the pistons. What we're going to do different in this one is we are actually going to produce all the items on site. Now, the whole goal of this was to, of course, do it without a player, but obviously you cannot get redstone without a player. So, what we are doing for that is basically we're going to center everything around the raid farm which will of course be in the center of the perimeter which is what we have in the center right here and this will dictate how fast we need to create all the other materials for the uh crafters in a sense because we can only go as fast as we create the redstone which is around i think 5400 redstone per hour i think with this uh e and x04 uh very simple raid farm that we got going on here um, obviously, this whole thing is supposed to be as lag efficient as possible. That way we could just basically run this in the background the whole time the server is active because everything will create enough to create the pistons, which we will get to later. As you can see, there's still some stuff going in there right now because we are running the wood one. So we'll explain all the farms that I just basically finished all of them. Uh, so we need to get villagers, which is what that breeder over there is for. Uh, we need villagers for, of course, the raid farm, and then we have all the villagers for the iron farm. Now, yes, that's an iron farm because I only wanted to do one dimension for this. That way, nothing is in cross dimension for this. Everything's in this one section, which makes it a little bit easier to do. So, uh, yeah, let's go down to all the farms. We'll start off with the one that is actually running, which is the tree farm. All right, so we got the tree farm here, which is the first one. Obviously, there still needs to be a lot more decoration that needs to be done here. And a couple adjustments it looks like because that should not have happened and that's not even a toggle stick because that's a redstone torch but apparently you can still short pulse that so some things would need to be adjusted i'd probably just add like a four tick repeater or something like that onto that to change it up but of course yes we have the bone meal farm this is dark bone meal farm uh we have about six modules i think of it yeah six modules that creates enough bone meal for this uh playerless azalea dual core tree farm that we got here uh, of course we need to do this all playerless so we need a playerless tree farm that gives us enough uh planks to fill up what we're going to be using over there so obviously we're making around 5400 uh redstone power with that red raid farm there we need to create three times as much as that in the spruce planks which this one definitely does so yeah very simple uh, basically same thing concept your bone mill and the moss blocks down here and this one is to replenish, of course, the rooted dirt that would go there because you don't handle that. All we do is push out the oak logs, so all we get from this farm is oak logs, which allows us to, without a filter, bring the logs back up that we craft here. And then I have these simple auto decrafters here, so we take the logs, turn them into planks, and then send them along to along these pipes here that we have basically hidden decoration in a sense to transport the items to the crafter right here, which is almost filled because we have two of the redstone blocks up here 
and then we just need this one to go up, which will be dictated by this comparator there. So yeah, these two together make this farm basically run infinitely because mm -hmm. the bill mill farm makes enough to supply itself, but also enough to feed something else, mm -hmm. which we actually make a, a little bit of excess of bill mill, which is perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Because you rather have too much than not enough, which is what the whole goal of this area is, because we create stuff faster than we produce it over there. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. We lose a little bit of items, but of course, because we always get more infinitely, that's the whole plan of this thing right here. So yeah, this is the iron farms. Of course, it's it's really stupid that we have so many different platforms. I think it's like 14 different platforms. Uh, but the whole goal obviously was to create it uh, one dimension. And these kind of actually do fit the theme we're going for. If you couldn't really make it out, we are kind of doing like an air base. So this will be like, one of the towers, this will be the control tower. Then we have the big raid farm, which is going to be like technically the uh, air control, but it's obviously in the center. So it doesn't make the most sense and it's really tall, but then we have this little uh, one over here. And then of course we have like these little hangers all right here with actual planes that our decorators have made to go with that. And then this will be a helipad over there. But yeah, then we have these two very, very small uh, cobble farms that Henrik and I actually did make here. Uh, these are relatively small for their size and create 14,000 cobblestone per hour per module. You can also make a very slight modification here to also make it work with basalt by just adding packed ice instead of the water. Water logs there is basically all you need to do is put pack or blue ice there. I'm sorry. And where the, where the water logs stairs are and you will create basalt instead. Of course we need cobblestone for the uh, crafter there and these will actually produce uh, an excess than what we need because we only need about 22,000. This will create a bit more than that. But like I said, more is better than nothing. And then like I said, we have the E and XO4 raid farm in the center here. The most simplest raid farm in a sense, uh, for stacking raids that is, and very, very efficient, but not in just terms of the redstone, in terms of lag as well. So I think this whole area, uh, not being a full render distance perimeter, should be under 10 MSBT added to the server, which is really, really good. But, you know, passively creating 5,000 pistons per hour and not having to worry about anything because everything is created on site and we don't need to worry about making anything, fill up anything at all. Obviously, as long as the player for the redstone is actually farming great. This is a lot more decoration. You see we have two of the walls here sort of representing the sky. Uh, of course, everything has to be spawn proofed in here. So we have different color carpets, of course, for the uh, on top of the green there and as well as on top of the stone and the andesite for that. So of course we have the braid farm. Everything needs to be spawn proof in a sense in a basically only in the circle, but it would look weird to only have a circle here. So everything in this perimeter is spawn proofed 100%. But uh, yeah, let's get back to this. I don't think we're gonna do a time lapse of anything. Uh, it's gonna be quite hard to do. Maybe a bit of decoration, I don't know for sure, but we shall see. All right, so I just finished putting in all of the zombies here. Obviously we got all the villagers in there as well. With the breeder, we still have some extra villagers just in case uh, we had some lightning strike, but we have the bed bot in place. So that should not be an issue at all. Of course, if you wanted to guarantee that you could run this farm without a bed bot, just need to ink, or have a little platform above here, made of glass, of course, so that nothing is spawnable, so that there is no chance of any lightning strike hitting the villagers down there. Uh, obviously, that's not going to work for our use case. As you can see here, all four walls are also now done. And yeah, we have one of the buildings completely completed there. And this is two more buildings. This one's actually really small. And of course we have the really hand that years here to finish it off you can see the spots that i put here for the wheels and stuff like that that's just to spawn proof all of the blocks that are not carpeted of course because there's either a block on top or a lever or button for the detail on the plane so we can now technically run the uh, raid farm we wanted to there is a couple of things over here that i am now forgetting about that we will need to do that one is perfectly fine. Those are all on top of the carpet, which is good. And there's only, and then of course there is only the buildings and 
apparently we are in a slime chunk over here. So yeah, I can go turn the mob switch back on now. That is not needed to be off anymore. We have all the zombies that I got. Basically all I did, made a platform in here. I moved all of the, the, the... Basically what I did here is I made a platform, just a regular dirt platform on top of here. Uh, to be in range of the, everything like that. So I could just basically branch out to all the ones individually and get them all in. As you can see, they're all holding various items just based off how they spawned, of course. And some of them even holding the minecarts that they were in originally to get them all in place. And they were put in minecarts, of course, first. That way I could guarantee that only one would go into each cell. And I would break one out at a time to then get them into the boats. And then I would then go across with the boats to each desired location here. They're, of course, all name tagged. So the ones that are not holding anything will not despawn anymore. There's of course not really an all and off switch you could do for this. It could technically hard power this trap door here if you wanted to turn the farm completely off. Which could be added at some point because you could work in the other all and off switch into this on top of the uh, water stream that we have for the, both the other farms including the cobble and the tree farms. Now the ray farm obviously there doesn't need to be an all and off switch because it's just the player not attacking and there that's what the, the farm turns off. But, of course, this is perfectly fine. It was, like I said, a little bit more decoration. We just basically need to clear the buildings. And we can actually run the raid farm. That way we can guarantee that everything is spawn proof. Because you can see that there. There is some uh, spots due to uh, the buildings that needed to be built to encase any water streams that go right up against the walls of those. But yeah, very, very good progress on here. This, I guess, will be our most used perimeter. Not in terms of people actually being here, but in terms of everything completely operating. Endlessly. But in terms of everything operating in the background, producing those pistons completely without any issues. Now, I am seeing that these iron farms did stop. So, there is something where we need to maybe go to all of them and hit the button so I could possibly add a line in there we'll see how often it gets used of course i don't plan to turn this off very often because it's designed to run in the background all the time once the server is active but we shall see obviously the farmers is working if we go to the crafters over here there should be some iron uh, that is flowing in to at least some of them which iron i believe is uh, right, I want to say. Oh, it is the bottom one right here. Ah, I see the issue here. So, uh, the way Dazi had this work here is there is a dropper here to decrease one hopper in the crafter. So, this gets powered and shoots the item through. So, we will need to do some pre filling. As you can see, there actually is iron here. I got kind of scared for a second. I went and you know, checked the water streams, but there is some iron that is flowing in. But of course, we need to pre-fill these bottom droppers and hoppers here to guarantee that that dropper will not run out of any items. Small uh, oversight just to save one hopper. Then again, it's not too big of a deal. The crafter does work. I did test it. Uh, this crafter was designed by Dazi. It is much faster than my one wide high level crafters I have made so far, which is why we are using it because therefore we only need two in a bit crafters. We're not going to use the full third one. Which is why we added the on-off switches here for the fill, in fill level indicators for each of the materials. That way, each corresponding crafter will only be used when everything is at its threshold. And if it were to fall below that, it would not turn on until that threshold is met again. Which, of course, is determined by this barrel being completely filled. So that does give us a bit of buffer. Because you also have the hopper on top of that before the crafter were turned off, so that in case if anything goes wrong with any of the farms, uh, the farms have time to catch up because most of them, we, we did plan out and make enough to fully sustain the crafters, so we should not have any issues with that. Uh, but in case anything goes wrong, you know, some iron takes a little bit longer to spawn, we have enough in the buffer to sort of uh, nulligate that and not have to worry about that break-in which of course this system does for us 
But yeah, like I said, a couple more things to do and we are fully, fully done here. And we can actually test it out. We'll see the finished product when we get back. All right, so everything is fully completed now. We'll head there. Obviously we're in the middle of building bolts here now, but that could definitely wait. There's two bolts here. Obviously these are right next to each other in a sense. We have the blaze one right there. Then just off to the left, right on the edge of the blaze farm perimeter. And the nether is the portal for the airbase perimeter, which is completely done. And we'll see it in action because it currently is running. No, we got everything all working up. We fixed some things to the crafter. We ran into issues with hopper hashing, but that is not a big deal anymore. I've made a fix. It may have taken me two hours in survival to figure it out, but it definitely is going to be worth it. Now, I don't know how there's still bats spawning here uh, because everything is supposed to be spawn proof. That way, everything for the raid uh, does not spawn on anything for the decoration. These are all carpets on top of the actual original block we go underneath here. We did do that. Obviously, we really didn't need to do that if we were going to cover it up anyway, but it doesn't really matter as of now. We have tested it for like a day, a little, a little bit over a day, and the uh, player did die there for the bot, the raid. I don't entirely know how because I've seen this never been an issue and we are using a sharpness 5 sword, uh, netherite sword, as well as full netherite armor. I did just put a uh, totem in the offhand as well, just in case a vex does spawn for whatever reason. And of course they also have strength too, so I don't entirely know how uh, the vexes did kill the player. But Testing it again, making sure it's all working, that way we can basically run this in the background forever, passively creating us pistons. And at its peak, it's not the best, I will say, uh, for the servers I wanted it to be, but uh, provided we don't have the player in the spawn chunks for the bed, which we do need, unfortunately, uh, due to some things not being weatherproof here. So that is kind of needed, sadly. We could always move the player, the bed player, from the spawn chunks to here instead. Um, but we shall see how that goes. But as of right now, it's only added about 15 MS on the server. Probably a little bit more, 15, 20 MS, which isn't really terrible. Most of it's coming from, unfortunately, that uh, bone meal farm. That is the uh, highest uh, lag producer we have, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, the crafters you can see are working. We should be overflowing in pretty much every department. Iron is overflowing. Cobblestones, of course, overflowing. The logs are also overflowing. So our main limiting factor right now is actually the redstone because we just started up the raid farm again. So this will take a little bit of time to reach its equal here. So you can see we are actually going up in the redstone department. So we are creating more than one crafter uh, cr uh, crates per hour, which is around 2,400. It looks as if one of the crafters has failed though, which I should take a look at and do those out to stop that from happening. All right, with the redstone blocks now in place, of course this crafter will tend uh, stop until this fill, until this redstone here is completely filled, which is not an issue. Obviously, it just takes a little bit of time for that buffer to be reached, and then you are all good, and it will run uh, without any issues. Uh, yeah, everything is keeping up with itself here, uh, which is good. And we're back to being filled with bone which is obviously ideal. And everything is working together. So in the end, we will passively create a lot and lot of pistons, which will probably be needed for a future project, which you can probably guess. So for a little bit there, obviously this isn't like a huge storage, not the whole purpose for it. We plan to do something very close to here, where we don't really need it to go to that storage. It will go to the circuit. I think we will need it to. But uh, yeah, everything is all done. Happy with how this area turned out, especially the decoration with how simple and clean it is. Yes, some things could be improved a bit, but uh, that's not really the whole point of this perimeter. It is to create a distance and decoration it is sort of the secondary option to it. But we are planning to obviously keep up with the decoration that we are doing on the server. This definitely does add a lot to everything here, but it's not our primary focus, the actual use case of the perimeter is always above everything else. But uh, yeah, hopefully this will continue to work for us, and we'll be back to it fully operational in time.
But yeah, let's cut to a very quick uh, showcase of the whole perimeter that I did create for this. And we'll